Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. Come on in. It's time to get dinner going. It's time. It's time, y'all. Got a couple of hours to get this meal on the table. So, what's on the menu today? I hope you got yours together because I sure do. Today, we're going to do some raspberry oven baked chicken. Y'all know I had to have chicken. I haven't had it in rotation for um, a week or so, I think. I missed it maybe a week or so. So, I'm still working on my 100 ways or more to do chicken. Okay, so, got chicken back in rotation. So, what I'm doing today is just going to bring it back full circle. So, I've got, this is the top to my big old roasting pan. So, you can use it as a grill as well. So, I'm going to grill this chicken in the pan. You know, just to get the grill marks on there, so to speak. And then, I, I want to get it browned up a little bit on both sides. And I'm going to put it in the oven and finish it off. So, I've got some, you know, chicken drumsticks. Y'all know what I like chicken drumsticks so all i've got some hot olive oil in here i'm gonna start putting my chicken in so i'm not talking where you can't hear me i'm telling you what i'm doing to it this is a one fourth cup of olive oil on that griddle and so i'm just gonna put it in there and let it start sizzling Make sure you have that uh, griddle pretty good and hot. Not too hot because you don't want it to get dark brown and you don't want it to burn. So just make sure you have it hot enough that you don't start forming any kind of juice just yet because it's going to bake off into whatever juice it needs to. Okay. One last one. Okay. chicken on there it um gonna have to do this about 10 minutes on each side i've got the season with um complete seasoning onion powder garlic powder and some chicken bouillon seasoning and some rosemary and of course my raspberry vinaigrette dressing I marinated this overnight, so it had about 12, 14 hours of um, time to marinate. So, hopefully you can hear me. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to hear me. Some people said they weren't able to hear me, but I'm talking right into the microphone. So, the, hopefully uh, the sizzling is not killing my voice, okay? Okay, now I've let the chicken sort of get the grill marks on both sides for 10 minutes just to uh, seal it. Now I'm getting ready to put it in a 375 degree oven. And before I put it in there, I went ahead and mopped it with some of my raspberry uh, seasoning. It's a raspberry uh, vinaigrette dressing, which is raspberry vinaigrette. 
dressing one cup full of that uh half a cup of brown sugar yes brown sugar brown sugar and uh some about a half a teaspoon of onion powder garlic powder and just mix it in real good a fourth of a stick of butter melt it down just a little bit mix it up real good and get it ready to glaze your chicken so i went ahead and put some of that sauce on there i'm getting ready to put it now into the oven at 375 and we're going to bake it for about an hour and a half almost not a slow cook but not a real fast cook either so they're ready to go in the oven and i'll be back in a few seconds and we're going to go ahead and do our um turkey meatballs with gravy so i'm gonna while that's happening my skillet is getting hot I've already pre-prepared my um, meatballs last night. You know, when you do something that do ahead of time, uh, prep work, it helps when you get ready to get on the stove and start cooking. It cuts down a lot of time. And I had to start figuring out ways to not be so tired when I finish cooking. So now this is going on the top rack in the oven, 375 for about an hour and a half. But in between, about three times, I'm gonna go in and marinate. I'm gonna start and mop it. Well, yeah, marinate it. <clears throat> go in and mop it with my mixture of um, raspberry. There it is right there, y'all. That little mixture of raspberry, butter, garlic, and my dry seasoning. So, got that ready to go. Now, I've already, like I said, pre-made my uh, turkey meatballs last night because I didn't want to have all that to do today. Okay. <clears throat> now, as you know, turkey meat is kind of soft-like, so you got to put some reinforcement in there. And uh, in there, I have, um, I didn't chop up any kind of uh, vegetables except just I already had some chopped onions from those chili dogs, so I went in and threw them in, but really you don't have to because you put a lot of dry seasoning in there, and I'm going to make a nice onion gravy to go in. So what I'm going to do, see I got my grease good and hot, I think. I've got uh, about a fourth of a cup of olive oil in there, and I've already made my meatballs. Pretty good size ones. Yeah, those are nice and meaty. And I'm gonna cook them pretty much all the way done. Then I'm gonna start making a gravy. I'll make a gravy to go with them. And we're gonna serve this over rice. Okay. And I've shown, you know, it's like making a roux or make a gravy. We'll go through that process as well. It'll take about, we're gonna cook these for about 10 minutes. So they're gonna go down in the gravy and they'll finish, finish cooking off. And one of the other reasons too why I made, went ahead and made my meatballs uh, last night is because that gave them a chance to set. And they're not so sticky, you know, like I say, uh, turkey meat is kind of soft. And it gets kind of sticky when you're dealing with it. So I went ahead and made them. And they're much easier to manage, like I can say. They, they hold together. And my, of course, you can see my meatballs are not perfect size, shape, or anything like that. They're going to taste perfectly good, though. I think I got 12. Yeah, probably 12. But these are going to be wonderful, especially over that rice with that good old onion gravy, y'all. Y'all know what it is. And like I said, I don't, I don't use a lot of ground beef anymore. I use mostly turkey meat. And you know, turkey meat is getting harder and harder to get a hold of, y'all. So I hope they don't cut out turkey meat all together. Turkey meat, um, for whatever reason, I don't know what's going on with turkey. Maybe they don't have the workers to process them or what, but I, I'm sure turkeys are still, you know, pretty viable. Okay, so there we go. We got our 12 meat balls in there. We're just going to let them cook for about 10 minutes on each side. Come back and do a gravy, and we'll have our turkey meat balls. So, the ingredients in these meatballs, this is three, one and three four pounds of ground turkey, one egg, one tablespoon of complete seasoning, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, 
and uh, two tablespoons of flour. Mix all of that together. And it's gonna be sort of sticky, y'all, because of the uh, texture of ground turkey. If you need to get you a big spoon like this to help you form those meatballs, just get you a big old spoon, form them, shape them, put them in some kind of a container, and get them into the refrigerator overnight or for a little while so they're not so sticky. Or you can make them, um, go ahead and do that to them before you even put them together and let the meat itself get firmed up and however you want to do it. It's easy for me to just do it this way. So once you get everything all mixed up together, remember three, uh, one pound and three fourths of ground turkey, one egg, two tablespoons of flour, a teaspoon of uh, onion powder, garlic powder, half a teaspoon of uh, black pepper, and one, uh, uh, a tablespoon of um, complete season, mix it all together, form your meatballs, let them firm up, cook them about six, about six, five minutes on each side, and then uh, take them out of the pan, make a gravy, and I'll show you when you get to the gravy part, and then go ahead and make your, your uh, roux or your gravy, put the meatballs back into the gravy and let them cook for another 30 minutes and they're ready. Just cover them and let them cook. Then you put them rice. And then the next thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to do some Brussels sprouts. Y'all know Brussels sprouts and those little uh, bite sized potatoes are one of my favorite things. So we're going to do, yeah, we have the two starches, the rice and the uh, potatoes. But it's going to be wonderful. Um, so we'll be right back. We're going to make the gravy shortly. Okay, hey, y'all, it's time to get the gravy going for the meatballs. I'm going to add about three tablespoons of flour. As you can see, I'm just pushing everything to the side. Don't need a lot, a lot, a lot of gravy, but we need enough. Okay. I'm not sure what kind of rice I'm going to cook with this. Maybe basmati. I might just use some basmati rice to go with this. So, we add a little bit more oil to the pan. A little bit more oil. I just need this uh, flour to brown up a little bit for me. And I've got my uh, my meatballs and of course my onions are already seasoned. So, I'm not going to put any seasoning in right this minute. Let's get this going. As you know, gravy is like easy to make. I'm just showing you just easy way to make. You don't want to take everything out. And my thing is, just use all these different dishes uh, when you're cooking. If you just do it in one pan, like I'm doing here, works for me. And while that meat is, is still back there, it's staying hot. And I just need this to brown a little bit for me. It just needs to brown a little bit for me. Leave that right there. To continue to cook. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is going to be my Brussels sprouts and my potatoes. Now, while that gravy is getting this stuff together, I'm going to let that continue to cook and brown. It has plenty of time. I got that on turn to medium high heat. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat on under my pan across the way over here. Got a fourth cup of olive oil in there. Yeah. Here let that Brussels sprout pan heat up. Just keep stirring, stirring, stirring. This is how you make the root of the gravy. I have some brown gravy mix up here. Maybe I'm just going to leave it alone because I got enough seasoning that I don't have to use my gravy packets to do anything. Give me a little clean up there. So what y'all got on the stove today? I hope you got some good cooking. Hope you've been um, relaxing. You know, I'm, I'm on this relaxation kick now. I'm me and my friend, Miss Barbara. We've been talking about, you know, relaxing and taking care of yourself and all that good stuff. 
and we both, you know, we are of that age now where we really need to do more of that than we do because we both, you know, we like to get in the kitchen and cook, we like to entertain, we like to do all this other stuff for other folks' situations. So we also have come to the conclusion our bodies are speaking to us now as we get older, especially. I'm telling you, my, my no mind is speaking to me. And we just talk, kind of talk about that in depth today. So I'm trying to cook meals that are less taxing. You know, I have to be in the kitchen four or five hours or three, even three or four hours is a long time when you're cooking. Okay. So it's ready to go in here. And I think now, so I got my onions in four as you notice. Get that heat back up on high. And I'm going to go ahead and pour in about two cups of water. Be careful because sometimes you know it's ready to pop up on you. Okay. And as you can see, we got gravy going in here, and then all you gotta do is just start putting your meat over into the gravy. It's gonna turn it down a little bit. Get everything going. So I can make sure, it's kind of thick, I'm gonna have to get some more water going in there. So we're gonna have us a pan full of gravy, y'all. Yes, indeed. And I think I might do some basmati rice. You know, basmati is kind of a lighter rice. Get a little bit more complete seasoning in there. Stop another teaspoon of complete seasoning. I need my black pepper in. And I need some of my, where's my chicken bouillon? Okay, the chicken bouillon is evading me right this moment, but I'm going to put some chicken bouillon seasoning into uh, this gravy mix just to get it seasoned up real good. And if you like, you can put salt. I'm, these days, I'm just not using a lot of salt. That's why I want to use the chicken bouillon. And you can keep stirring in this to figure out just how thick you want this gravy. And I think my gravy is as thick as I want it right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my teaspoon of bouillon. Yep, yep. Okay. See how nicely that gravy came out? And all I'm going to do is put the lid on it and I'm going to let this cook. So that all the seasoning can cook into the meat and all the seasoning that's in the meat can cook out into this gravy. I mean, there's all different kinds of ways you can make gravy. And you know how I make gravy depends on what I'm cooking. Uh, if I want to, you know, use a lot of time or a little time or whatever the case might be in this situation. Because this skillet is big enough, I can make everything all at one time in the same pan. I didn't have to take it out or do anything like that. Okay. <clears throat> I think I need a little small hit more of a, you know, I've got that kitchen bouquet. Um, it's that seasoning that makes that gravy a little bit browner. I would like it. I should have browned it a little bit more. Well, I thought I had some kitchen bouquet left over. Oh, I know what I want to look. You know, you give these uh, gravies a little different flavor. I got a little, just a little bit of sesame oil that I want to share in there. Okay, how about that? Okay. 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 A little bit of sesame oil. That'll just give it a little bit, just add another element, you know, that element to, to where when you eat, you think, wow, what is that flavor? What is that that you got going on in there? 
and I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more black pepper. About another half a teaspoon. Okay. okay. If I find that kitchen bouquet, I'm sure I got some a little bit at least left over. I might hit it with a little bit more of that, but that's a pretty light brown gravy. I like it a little bit darker, but we ain't gonna worry about it. Okay. Roll just like it's rolling. I'm gonna turn that heat all the way down and I'm gonna let these babies cook. And I'm just simply gonna put the lid on and we're done with that. So, what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna switch burners and start cooking my Brussels sprouts and potatoes. All right, I got my Brussels sprouts all washed, cut, clean, ready to go. Okay, you get ready to get a real loud sizzle. So once you hit the sizzle, I'm not gonna try to talk anymore. I'm gonna put Brussels, I got Brussels sprouts and onions cut in there and a little bit of seasoning on them. I'm gonna get my uh, potatoes for here shortly. So here's how we're gonna do this. Got that heat all the way up. I'm gonna do that for a minute. And then I'm gonna go get my potatoes to put in there. So I'll let these cook to a point and then I get my potatoes. But that lid kind of muffled that sound for me a little bit. But I gotta get up in there and put some seasonings on there. And it's gonna start up again. So, the next time y'all see these Brussels sprouts and potatoes, they'll be ready to eat them. I got my potatoes. You know, I run my potatoes through the microwave for a little bit, so... I need to run them back through again, and then I'm going to put them in, and we'll be okay. Okay, y'all, I'm back real quickly. You know, I, I told y'all I don't like to waste stuff. I got had so many uh, ripe bananas left over, so I'm going to take about two and a half or three of them, and I'm going to make a banana cake with a blueberry banana frosting on it. All it is is a box of uh, Betty Crocker. Super Marsh Yellow Cake Mix. Mix it according to the instructions. Um, let me get that. I need to get one of these bananas out of here so that I can have it. I don't know why I didn't already take it out. Let me get my banana out. I want a little bit of that frosting. I'm gonna make a banana blueberry frosting that go on top of the cake. And all you gotta do with that banana season, they're so nice and soft, just smash them like so. I usually put them in the freezer for my smoothie at this point, but then I went and bought more bananas. So I got more bananas than I need. So we're gonna put this into the mix along with the butter, the eggs, and the water. It's gonna be so simple to make. So the only thing I'm doing that you probably don't normally do unless you add some uh, extras into yours. So this is probably about a half a cup of smashed bananas. Just smash them up real good like so. You may even have little chunks in the mix. So I'm just gonna put it right into the mix. Y'all honey, y'all know this is home or home week when I'm cooking it here. This is my third of a stick of butter. Third of a cup, yeah, third of a stick or third of a cup of butter. Three eggs. I think it says a third of a cup of water. We'll put that much. We'll come over here and mix for a minute and see what the consistency is. Making desserts are so easy. But you know what? We don't use do dessert, so anyway. That's the cake mixed up. I'm gonna get it in the pan, gonna bake it. And when y'all see it again, it'll be ready to slice and put on a little salsa. So I'll be right back. 
Okay, y'all, dinner is ready, ready, ready. Those luscious meatballs, turkey meatballs, and that gravy and onions, rice to serve it over. Those scrumptious um, potatoes and Brussels sprouts, and of course that good old, good old raspberry vinaigrette chicken. We're getting ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal. Thank y'all for stopping by. Thank you for your well wishes, your prayers, your challenges, and your compliments, and your comments. Thank y'all for continuing to pray without ceasing. And please do that for our president. You know, he's that COVID came back on him. Pray for leadership in general, you know, state, local, and federal. Pray for your families. School children, remember, they are a special project right now because they get ready to go back to school. So, got to get them prayed up and get them back in school mode. So, until I decide to cook again, thank y'all for stopping by. Love you guys. Toodles.